everything for school? Would it be sad to say it go? Um, in some ways, it's a bit of a relief because I was it was getting a bit upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, oh god, I've got no room for anything else. Oh. And I was just started to go into cupboards and things. Oh, and, yeah. You know, and I thought, well, what a shame because somebody could get joy out of it. Yeah. I've just got it in the cupboard. Oh, well, that's a nice way to think. That's a good way to think. Yeah. And there's some lovely, lovely pieces. Yeah. Some early, some late, some big, some small. I think there's something to attract new buyers but also seasoned collectors as well. Yeah, yeah. Because I think we counted about 150 pieces at least. Wow. So Lynn, what is it then about Clara's Cliff that you absolutely love? Um, the thing that attracted us most was her background. Her story. A story. Yeah. yeah. The story behind the working class lady. Yeah. Who within 14 years came to represent a big company and basically ended up with a boss. She did. And, she did. And the company. Yes, and the big country house. And the house. company. And the lovely company house and everything. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. She's one of my heroes from the 20th century. Yes. Even though she was born in 1899, so the very last year of the 19th century. She is an absolute hero. So how did you discover her history? Um, it was a chance find when in the late 1980s, a grandparent died and I was asked to help to sort out the house. And I came across this. Right, the little cauldron. A little cauldron, but yeah. this wasn't the original one. The, right. the one that I found was totally broken. Right. So I had to glue it back together. Did you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I, I looked at who it was about, like where it was from. Yeah. And I did some research. And I just got hooked. So t tell me the story as you know it about Clarice Cliff. Well, a lady, like you say, born 1899 and in Stoke. Yeah. During, and her sort of like work in history was in the 1920s. Yeah. And everybody thinks about the 1920s as being the roaring 20s yeah. and Rudolf Valentino yeah, and glamour. all of these glamour. But the reality was so different. Yeah. And it was tough. She had the same background as myself. Right, okay. Because I didn't have any hygiene facilities when I was growing up. Right. I was from a mining community. Right. So we had tin baths, we had gas lamps in the 1960s even. Do you know, it's yeah. amazing. You, you, you talk about Clarence Cliff living that kind of very, very hard working class mm -hmm. life. But you experienced it as well. You, you don't look like a person that would have experienced that. Seriously, you don't look old enough, obviously. No. But it's remarkable that later on in the 20th century, people were still living yes, like that. Yes, in the 1970s. Yes. Uh -huh, where we had the tin bath that was outside the door. Wow. And you um, put it in front of the fire. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's fantastic. And big families. I mean, yeah. my dad was one of 12 children. Right. And I know Clara's Cliff was one of about eight. So you're really related to her. Yeah, really, really related to her. But I bet you didn't start work as early as her. No, I didn't. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think she was about 12 or 14, wasn't she? Yes, she was, she was very young. I mean, I was lucky. I was the first one in my family to go to university. Right. So I started work later in life. But the interest in her is just, I just, it's something you can't put down. I, I absolutely agree. And she was not only did she have a great work ethic, because she did, didn't she? She did. She worked hard. She really did, because those girls would go into the pottery and, and they, would, they would learn to paint plates or cups, wouldn't they? And then they would get paid per plate and cup. Yes. And so they wouldn't move from one department to another, because the better and the quicker they became, the more money they earned. Exactly. But what did Clarice do? Well, she wasn't frightened to put down the wage of pay. Yeah. Because if the factory wasn't doing very well, then as the owner, kind of, yeah. supervisor, yeah. then she wasn't fighting to low wages. No. So, a bit like today. Absolutely. You know, nothing. You look at history yes. and you realise that whatever we're going through today, something similar has happened. Exactly. It's about like zero contract hours, isn't it? All of that. Yeah. All of that. We're back and to that. Low tax, high tax, which is the best. You know, we, we don't really know. No. But you can learn an awful lot from history and we don't learn very much from history, do we? Let's no, be honest. No, we don't. But what I love about Clarence is the fact that she did, even as a young girl, a 14 year old, want to move to another department to paint teapots or plates, earning less money because she'd be slow, but just to learn the process. So she yes. self-taught, wasn't she? She was. 
and she had tenacity. She did not. And determination. Didn't she just? Mm -hmm. And she, so she had the perfect combination, obvious natural intelligence. Yes. A work ethic, a drive, a determination, and great skill style as a designer. Mm -hmm. Again, self-taught. Where did these patterns come from, do you think? I mean, she must have had an amazing mind to be able to turn her, where well, she turned the Newport factory around, didn't she? She did. You know, she did. It went from very mundane, and mediocre yeah. to, well, bizarre and fantastic. That's right. All these things. I mean, and yes. they were bizarre and fantastic. They were. They were so different. And even today, you won't find anything no. remotely like it. No. A lot of copyist. Yes. People still copy in Clarence Cliff. Mm -hmm. Now, remind me, how was she discovered? Because I know that she was allowed to paint the blanks, wasn't she, or, or the damaged pieces? She was, yeah. Well, she worked on seconds. Yeah. And that was how she learned her trade. Yeah. Was so they allowed her to paint on, on the damaged pieces or the seconds? They did, because they would have just been chucked away anyway. Yeah. And you see them now in, in Stoke where they're digging up loads of little bits. Uh, really? Where they, where they buried stuff. Yes. From That was, um, wasn't good enough to sell, so yeah. it was smashed up and, yes. and buried. You see, there's another example of her character that she was willing to work for free, I suppose. Yes. Was she? To, to, to practice her own designs. Mm -hmm. And they allowed her to do that. And then how did the bizarre pieces get onto the market? I think that was very much down to her and a convincing yeah. Coley, the boss. The boss, yeah. Yeah. To try it. To try it and see what happened. And she was very good at um, displaying things. Yeah and marketing things. Yeah. And everybody was surprised that yes. the market loved it. I, I, I heard a story that the salesman would go out with a few bizarre pieces and show it to the retailers. And the retailers loved it. They tried it and the public loved it even more. And it just took off, but nobody expected it to happen. No. So she was an absolute trailblazer. Mm -hmm. She was. A remarkable one. And then, yes, of course, so she had an affair with the boss. Yes. <laughs> she and she had a wonderful lifestyle afterwards. She did, and deservedly so. Mm -hmm. yes. And do you think there's ever been a time since her day, the 1920s, that she's ever been unpopular? I think I noticed the change probably in the early, 20, in the early like the 2000s. Did you? Well, yeah, because things that I would have paid a lot of money for in yeah. the 1980s, yeah. by the year 2000, you were getting through a song and a dance. Interesting. And the market now, how do you feel? You, you probably keep a track of this. I do, and now I feel as though it's on the up again. Yes, yeah. Especially the early pieces, because what you're looking at now was things that are nearly 100 years old. Exactly. I mean, literally, proper, uh -huh. proper antiques now. Yes, yes. they are. The, and the, they're so vibrant and colourful yeah. that I could understand how young collectors are going for them. Yeah, it and does. She, I think she's inspiring another generation. Do you think she inspires artists as well? I, I, think, she I does, think she does, yes. Still? Have. Yes, because the one regret that I don't have with me collecting of Clarus was association with Dame Laura Knight. Yes, that's right. Because yes. of the circus figures. Yes. And she did a lot of work surrounding that. Yes. With ceramics. And she inspired all, and Susie Cooper, of course, was a, was a, yes. a connection and inspiration, I, I think, from she Clarus. She is, and Charlotte yeah. Reed as well. And Charlotte Reed, all of these names that, that we know of it was that the catalyst was Clarence, Clarence Cliff. Cliff yes I mean I do have a couple of pieces of Susie Cooper right and a little bit of uh, Charlotte Reed yeah as well because I think you can't have one without the other no you can't mm -hmm. it's just a natural trail and something I discovered recently because I knew I was coming to see Lynn here I just looked up a few facts that I'd written about many years ago about Clarence Cliff and you know when she set up her little studios and they called them the bizarre girls yes who worked under the control painting these fantastic things do you know that there was four boys did you know that i didn't know i've only just discovered it there were about 70 bizarre girls and four, four bizarre boys. boys there you go <laughs> yes. i never knew that mm -hmm. that's quite interesting isn't it yeah you'll never know actually who painted them no, really you, will you you'd never know you don't know do you but it's wonderful to think that clarice cliff very likely certainly cast her eye over this yeah she was monitoring all of these girls painting her designs oh yes definitely i mean she was absolutely in control wasn't she, she was yeah and that's what i like about her as well yeah she had that confidence 
She where did. a lot of working class people wouldn't have had that tenacity, wouldn't have had that confidence. Now, where did that come from? Was that just natural? I think it is, yes. Yeah. I mean, I suppose I'm a bit of trailblazer myself. Yes. Because I was the one who stretched out in the family and yeah. went to higher education. Yeah. When it wasn't really expected. No. No, that's right. So you're a Clarence Cliff of your family. Yes. Yeah. Kind of, yes. Yeah. And I'm surrounded by you now. It's, it's wonderful. And what are you going to do when you sell all of this collection? Are you going to start collecting something else? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> you're a born collector. I am. Yeah. I mean, I love interesting pieces. You've got a very artistic eye. Have you ever practised art yourself? I've tried to, but I'm yeah. not very good at it. Ah. <laughs> ah. But I suppose it's something that you could improve on, isn't it? Well, that's a great thing with art. Anything goes, really. It does. And yeah. it's a constant learning process. Yes, and I love industrial art and I love social history. Yes. My background. With the mining. Yeah, and yeah. my granddad was part of the Jarrah March. Oh, was he really? Yeah. Was that, when was that, 1936? Yes, 1936. Wow. Well, that's a great, proud industrial heritage you've got, just like Claris. It is, yes. Uh, and he was so sick of the mines because he was a miner. Yeah. And I'm proud to say I'm a miner's daughter and granddaughter. Yeah. Um, he was so sick of the mines and the conditions. He was, he was in an exempted occupation during the Second World War. Yeah. But he joined up. Did he? He did. Wow. So he went to fight Romanil in the desert. How wonderful. What a great story. What a great family story. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now this is something maybe you should write about in actual yes. fact. Well, I've often said, I wish I'd asked him more questions. <sighs> it's always the case. Mm -hmm. because, Isn't it? Yeah. Because he, he was a wonderful storyteller. Yeah. And he inspired me so much. And he used to say that I was like him. That I had coal in me blood. Oh. Do you know there's nothing wrong in that, is there? Mm -hmm. Especially where we are here. We're just outside of Durham, yes, in Stanley, near, near Concert. A real proper old mining district, isn't oh, it? Oh, goodness me, yes, sir. And still is very proud. Yes, it we is. We just had a very local miners' um, march. Right. Literally down Stanley Front Street. Yeah. With half a dozen banners. Wonderful. It, it was lovely. Does it make you feel terribly proud when you see those old banners? It does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm proud to say I'm a miners' daughter and I'm, and I'm a... A granddaughter of a minor as well. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And you're still in the, the in the same area, so your roots are really firmly planted here, mm -hmm. like Clarissa's were in Stoke on Trent. The potteries, you exactly. know, where, where it all went on, didn't it, mm -hmm. for a number of hundreds of years, really, oh, yes, providing the whole world with pots. And now that there's no mines, I feel as though it's my legacy to make sure that the young people realise what their heritage is. So this is why I buy pieces of local art which display my working class background and history of the mines and what men used to go through. A very tough life. A very, very tough life. Very like Claris. Very much so. And if you go back mm. to your grandfather's day, natural fact. Oh, and the third. Oh my goodness me. You know, children going yes, down the mine. Exactly. He was uh, only 15. Was he? Mm -hmm. exactly. and, then, and then maybe the generation before him, they might be going down at nine. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tough days. So, yeah, there's no privileges there. No. There was no privilege. None no. at all. So the parallels yeah. with um, Claris is wonderful, but also one of my relatives, um, when the pit, local pit closed, they actually went down to Stoke. Right. And my, my aunt worked in the potteries. Okay, so there's another connection there. So in the late 60s, yeah, so there's oh. another connection. Oh, Lynn, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. Well, we're going to put all of these pieces for sale through Elstob and Elstob in Ripon, so I'll put the link below the video to the auction house so you can see everything listed individually and some pieces might go as little groups and you can buy a piece of Lynn yes her collecting can. passion yes and it'll continue in a different form good but it'll continue it's been an absolute pleasure meeting you Lynn mm -hmm. it's it really been a has. lovely pleasure meeting you as well. well thanks ever so much and loads of luck with the sale mm -hmm. thank you you're perfect. You need to be on the BBC. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is uh, no editing.